Hello learners, I am Chayanika Roy from the discipline of English, Krishnakanta Handik State Open University. Welcome to the second part of the video lecture on the topic Industrialism and its Impact. In the first part, we have dealt with the concept of industrialism and discussed some of the aspects of the pre-industrial times. We have also learned about the various inventions that were responsible for bringing about the Industrial Revolution. In this video, we shall try to focus on the Industrial Revolution with reference to England. For a long time, it was believed that Britain provided the world with the model for industrialization and set a trend that the rest of the world followed. However, present-day historians and social scientists have taken a newer look into the idea and challenged the superiority of England as the path-breaking industrial empire. With regard to the Industrial Revolution in England, it may be noted that between the 1780s and 1850s, there occurred a great transformation in the industry and economy of England. And this is the period of the first industrial revolution in England. The term industrial revolution was first used by the socialist philosopher and writer Frederick Engels in 1845. John Stuart Mill also used the term in his Principles of Political Economy as early as 1848. The term was used by the English philosopher and economist Arnold Toynbee in order to signify the changes that took place in British industrial development between 1760 and 1820s. The Industrial Revolution refers to a period of remarkable economic and industrial growth in the cotton and iron industries, in coal mining, in the building of roads and canals throughout England and in foreign trade. There were many factors responsible for Britain's lead in industrial and economic growth. For example, new inventions in industry were made in England because of the scientific temperament patronized by the English monarchy. The country was naturally rich in supplies of coal and iron, the essential materials for the new industries. Among the European countries, Britain was the first to apply machine to manufacture. During this time, the British politics was relatively stable in England. Wales and Scotland unified under a single monarchy. This led to cross-border taxes being minimized, which further added the advantage of a common law, a single currency and a large market. Though the land enclosures of the 16th century and the use of machinery in farming led to an agricultural revolution, it also rendered many small-time farmers landless, adding to unemployment and migration of the rural poor into nearby towns. This large-scale migration also provided ample and cheap labor force. The population in most of the towns in England grew manifold. London gained significance as the principal source of loans for international trade too. The city gradually became the hub of trade and many companies functioning in America, Asia, Africa and the West Indies set up offices in London. England was also helped by a good network through rivers, indented coastline with good transportation and market outreach. All these factors aided the upsurge of the Industrial Revolution in England and set the stage for far-reaching changes in the social and economic front. With regard to the spinning and weaving industries, it may be noted that with abundant raw material and ready market, it was not difficult for Britain to gain supremacy in the world textile industry. 
Though the textile industry made rapid strides in England, it caused untold misery to its workers, mostly women and children who were made to toil ceaselessly and in very bad working conditions. Several inventions paved the way for this remarkable progress made by Britain in the field of textiles as already discussed. Among them, the most remarkable ones were John Key's The Flying Shuttle Loom, James Hargreaves' The Spinning Jenny, Richard Orkwright's The Water Frame, Samuel Crompton's The Mule, and Edmund Cartwright's The Power Loom. Though the textile industry made rapid strides in England, it caused untold misery to its workers, mostly women and children who were made to toil ceaselessly and in very bad working conditions. Naturally, rich in resources of coal, iron, timber, copper, lead and tin, the Industrial Revolution brought a great boom in the metallurgical industry also. The discovery of coal greatly revolutionized the iron industry as iron came to be used to make household furniture, machines, water pipes and so on. Later, steam power replaced water power and brought about further progress in the iron as well as textile industry. Another advantage for England was that most of the iron fields were located near its ports so that the products could be easily shifted to overseas markets. Consequently, there was a growth in the shipping trade as well as in shipbuilding. In 1769, James Watt patented his invention, the steam engine. Watt's steam engine came to be largely used in coal mines, iron furnaces and the textile industries. In the 1770s, John Wilkinson, known as Iron Mad Wilkinson, made the first iron chairs, vats for breweries and distilleries and water pipes. The increase in the use of machines also necessitated better means of transport and communication. Thus, a revolution was also brought about in road and river transport and subsequently in railways. Rich land owners with mines and quarries on their lands initiated the process of canal making in order to transport goods and connect the loads to big market cities. The first canal called the Worsley Canal was built in 1761. From the 1760s to the 1850s, a period known as the period of canal mania, over 4,000 miles of canals were built. Along with the making of canals, road conditions were also vastly improved and many new roads were constructed. Thus, in this video, we have got an idea of the remarkable inventions in the textile industry, development of transportation, coal, iron, etc. Apart from getting an overview of the growth of industrialism in England. I hope this video will help you in understanding industrial revolution in the context of England. In the third part of this video series, we shall discuss the impact of industrial revolution and try to relate it with the rise of the working class. Thank you.